Welcome to this week's featured installation coming to you from Warragamba, New South Wales. In today's special episode, our expert installers Joel and Blake are mic'd up and ready to give you an installer's view of a Penrith Solar Center installation process. Here's what you can expect to learn. What happens to your panels when the screw lines don't line up? How to seal roof penetrations? How to wire earthing correctly? And how trunking cable is managed on the roof? And much more. Today's install is 22 N-Type 440 Watt Trina solar panels powered by Enphase IQ8 microinverters on all black Schleder racking. Let's check in with the boys and start with how the screw lines affected the layout of this design. As you can see, this house was built in the 1950s. Um, it was actually a settler's house um, when they built the dam. So it's kind of all over the shot. I think it probably had a roof redone at some point and the screw lines actually don't match up. So to run the rails across the roof in a portrait configuration wouldn't work today. So we're consolidating the panels and, and flipping them to landscape. Um, it's just gonna be a nicer product at the end of the day and hide all the brackets and, and it's just gonna look, look good at the end of the day. So it's a little bit more work for us, but um, the finished product will be, be ace, so let's get it. Please turn yours on silent mode, please. I only know, I only got one speed on here, bro. It's just go. You didn't, you didn't pay for the silence, though? Nah. I don't have BMAC money. You're gonna have too many channels going by the end of the year. What, eight more feet with screws, please? There should be some in the belly box on that side over there. Oh, do 10, do 10. Fucking three eight screw, copy. Today it was a timber frame, so um, the timbers weren't too messed up, so took the screw out and, and, and drove a bigger screw in. Yeah, bigger screw. Depending on the material that we use, if, we, if we're going into metal, we, we'll try and make a new hole, just, just because the hole gets blown out so much and it, it doesn't grab too well, so. It just a, it depends what the material we're, we're drilling into. Today's nice, strong hardwood, so. Why they do you? Uh, there's two different circuits running to the roof today. So um, we have uh, 11 panels per circuit on these eight IQ8 AC. Um, so that gives us about just under 20 amps per per leg. So two two four mils will get us get us out of trouble there. monitoring sort of system to ensure that all uh, all solar installs are done to a correct standard I suppose uh, and yeah just including the type of microinverter that we're installing just need to show off the uh, the nameplate um, uh, and yeah just got to plug in our AC Q cable just to uh, ensure that there's power running through these so that they're able to yeah power up and be able to produce and turn the PC into AC clean energy going back through the house just tying up our uh, our trunking just to ensure that it's not touching the, the surface of the roof. Um, that's just one of the one of the standards in the uh, solar rules book. So we're going over this with steel tires just to ensure that out in the weather here, even though they're under the panels, they're still not going to sort of break down over time and fall off and make our uh, make our cables end up touching the ground. So yeah, just going over everything, make sure it all stays up, looking nice and pretty. Makes it easier for us to lay over the top of them as well. It's like a third layer of... Yeah, that's just to go around. We pretty much just just button it all up and make sure there's no possible chance of water coming into the ceiling. It's a big hole in the roof. It's a 25 mil hole into the roof. And if it's not sealed and done right, it's, it's a magnet for water. So yeah, it definitely can be. Now we're just working it into the into the roof sheet and the deck tight. Little hack to get this uh, sicker flex off your hands is uh, sugar soap. Not sure how good it is for your skin, but definitely gets it off. make sure to get the earthing done before we start doing our terminations um, just because it's something that's essential to go into each and every term um, 
So yeah, I don't know, I sort of leave it till last once everything's tied, come through, let it have its own clear little pathway, make uh, easier, shorter runs for myself, things like that. Full how-to tutorial here. A pinch, twist, push. Repeat the same. Grab both together. Sometimes I might just start it with my fingers just a little bit. It looking nice. Come on through. Twist it nice and tight to remove the air gap for the best possible flow of uh, electrons. Give it a little fucking snip. What do you know about electrons? <laughs> you know nothing about no electrons. Oh, bro, I know something. <laughs> and then we have our earth lug. <laughs> Shut up, idiot. Just making content, bro. What do you want from me? <laughs> Sit our earth lug here on. Slide it right the way up and in. Don't like to have too much copper sort of showing out. Sit nice and tight. Get it on. Pull test. And we're done. And then I'll tie this up nicely into a little loop. It's got a little service loop there on it. And tie it along. Earth out the rest of my rails. Well, that's everything.